Hi. Um, so we'll pray so that we begin. Let's pray. Uh, our dear kind and loving master, what about? We want to thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord. As we start our devotion, I pray that may you be with us. May everything that is planned out happen in accordance with your will, Lord. For we are praying this, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so, we'll start, I'll start by introducing who Shofa is. For those who don't know who Shofa is, so Shofa is a group of young men and women who have come together to worship God and to spread God's word through song. And uh, it started in 2014 with a hand with sorry with 30 members, and now we are at 100 plus members, which is really good. And uh, the theme of this year is I'm no longer a slave; I am a child of God. So we have been dealing with we've dealt with the mental facets, we've dealt with the social facets, and now we are doing the physical facet where we'll be talking about today's topic is punchline to a well-being. And uh, I hope we learn something. I hope we all learn something today. And uh, now I would like to introduce uh, Agnes Maureen, who will lead us through song for tonight. So welcome, Agnes, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Faith. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Agnes, and the song I'll be singing today is Blessings. Yes, Blessings by Laura Story. And I think the punchline of the message for everyone who's had that song but especially for me is that sometimes the trials of this life are definitely God's masses in disguise. So yeah, be blessed, yeah. We pray for blessings, we pray for peace, comfort for family, protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, for prosperity. We pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. And all the while you hear it spoken me, yet love is way too much to give us as a Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand people as not in the world it takes to know your need? What if trials are this night? Are your massive in disguise? We pray for wisdom, your voice to you. We cry in anger when we cannot feel you need. We doubt your goodness, we doubt your love. As if every promise from your word is not enough. And all the while you hear each desperate need. And long that we'd have faith to all believe. Because what if you're blessing? Come to raindrops. What if your healing comes to tears? What if a thousand people is not in so hard it takes to know your need? 
Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Agnes, for the beautiful, beautiful singing. Uh, now we're going to move to the devotion. Um, so our speaker for today, our speaker for today is um, Dr. George Oyo. Um, so Dr. George Oyo is a medical evangelist. He serves as an elder at New Life SDA Church. He's also a, a professor of medicine at the University of Nairobi. He, had, he heads the rheumatology, rheumatology unit at, the, at Kenyatta Hospital. So he heads the rheumatology unit at Kenyatta Hospital, and he's a preacher of the gospel who believes that there is need for continuous discussion between health workers and the laity for better health outcomes. So that's Dr. George Oyo, who is going to speak to us tonight on punchline to our well-being. So before he begins, or before we pray, there'll be a question and answer session at the end of the, of the session. You can type your question in the chat or you can send it directly to me or to Dr. George himself. Yeah, so that's for the question and answer. So we shall begin, but before we begin, let's pray. So we pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. As the speaker begins, as the speaker speaks to us tonight, Lord, I pray that may his words touch our hearts, O oh God. May they impact our lives, may they change our hearts. For we bring this, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. So welcome, Dr. George Oyo. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, it's a privilege for me to be with you this evening, and I want to thank Shofa and uh, my daughter, Gary, for inviting me to come and be the young people so that I can feel young at heart. Uh, Wangare told me that uh, I've heard of Shofa, and I think you've come to New Life several times, and recently you were, at, you were requested to come and be practicing at New Life. I hope uh, uh, you'll be coming. Uh, but Wangari uh, informed me that you are going to be practicing at uh, the Nairobi Center of Church. I was told uh, about your theme and that my aim was to kind of need diet, uh, nutrition, and uh, exercise 
in, 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 in your theme. So it covers the physical aspect. And therefore, I, I, I uh, entitled my presentation as punchline to our well being. Before I share my slides, I want us to pray, then I read for you the verse that I thought is relevant to our message. Let us pray, Father in heaven. Just want to thank you for this Sabbath day and uh, the opportunity you have given us to just share together and fellowship together. Father, we pray that you may be with us, speak to us in a special way, change our lives, turn us around for you. May we even make a U-turn for you. In Jesus' name I pray. I want us to turn together to the third epistle of John. The third epistle of John, I'll read from verse, I'll read verse two, which says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. I'll say that um, John is writing to the, the disciples that he prays that they prosper in all things. The assumption was that their soul was already prospering. And I'm assuming that the Lord has been a blessed chauffeur group and their soul is prospering. But I'm praying that they prosper in all things and in health just as their soul is prospering. I'll apologize for the light and the background noise because I'm not in my usual ecosystem, but let me try to share my screen. Are you seeing my screen? So my presentation is balanced living line to our well-being. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about health, and uh, health is a total a situation of a total well-being, both physical, mental, social, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. And I want to say that health is a total well-being, physical, mental, social, and spiritual. So when you're talking about health, you're also talking about spiritual well-being. And the absence of well health is caused by sin. So that um, physically, you end up with disease and culminating in death. You remember that death was brought in this world by sin. Absence of mental health makes our minds to be filled with evil. The social relationship, we end up with hatred, crime, divorce. These are opposite of health. And absence of spiritual health leads to altered, altered spiritual nature. So the route for a better health, I'm sure many of you have heard of New Start, and this is a route for a better health that talks about nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperature, air, rest, and trust in God. And today our punchline will be on nutrition and exercise, but we will make mention of all the other facets as we pass by. I want to say that air is essential for life and life cannot proceed without air. The issue of air and oxygen has become uh, uh, topical and hit headlines in recent times since the emergence of COVID. And, 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 and that's when people realize that air and breathing in is essential for life. And many people have lost their lives because of lack of oxygen facilities in, 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 uh, in various health facilities, oxygen in various health facilities. And, and, and that has brought focus that the thing that God gave us for free is actually very important and essential for life. And you have to pay for it to survive in these times of COVID. And 
talking about nutrition, I want to say that 90 to 95% of sickness is due to faulty diet. You recall that even Corona was introduced into the world by those who are eating uh, 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 weird uh, food. They were eating bats in, 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 uh, in uh, they were eating bats. And that's how even Corona came in. So most of the sickness, 95% of sickness due to faulty food. And therefore man is just what we eat and what we eat makes a difference. It makes a difference what we eat. In fact, the vitality, how long you live in this world, how vital, how energetic you'll be, the quality of your life, the decision you make when you are open your mouth to eat. A sensible diet is essential for good health and long, health, long life and uh, uh, good health even in old age. So, the, so whether you eat, Paul writing the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31, that whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So it is important what we eat or what we drink. But Paul is saying that whatever you do, when you are doing this, you should do it for the glory of God. You should not just open your mouth to eat when it is not glorifying God. And, and, and uh, eating is linked to diseases, diseases such, as, such as obesity. You know, obesity is the leading cause of death worldwide. Obesity, the leading cause of death. Because obesity carries with the, it's, itself, within, within it, diabetes, hypertension, cancer, heart diseases. Those are packages that you are working with when you are obese. And obesity is proportional to the amount of food that you eat. And the, uh, 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 if you, you store what you eat, but also if you don't exercise, you also don't burn what you eat. So the vigor and vitality we anticipate from life can be lost at our meal table. When you open your mouth to eat, you are making an important decision on how long you live in this world and the quality of life you are going to live in this world. So you may lose vigor and vitality. Your well-being in the future is not pegged on how educated you are or how much money you have accumulated or how much, each, what insurance you have, what insurance scheme you have, but on what you are eating, what you are eating. And I wish that people would pay attention to what they are eating. Eating habits helps in improving and maintain us of health. And we need to have good eating habits guided by the scriptures. We need to maintain an bo ideal body weight by balancing physical activity and food int intake. In fact, when you are talking about gaining and losing, the only time you gain by losing is when you, no, no, one of the times when you gain by losing, when you lose weight, you gain health. You know, when you lose, when you're hypertensive, for example, a loss of weight will lead to decrease in blood pressure. A loss of weight can lead to control of blood sugar without taking medications. A loss of weight can lead to controlling arthritis of the knee. You lose 10% of the weight of the body and you gain, you lose pain in the knee by 50%. So you can gain health by losing weight. Eat only a moderate amount of sugar and foods containing added sugar. Sugar is one of the poisons of our time. If the Lord helps you and you have no appetite for sugar, the Lord has blessed you. If you can avoid anything, avoid sugar and foods containing added sugar. Choose low salt foods and use salt sparing because salt, you know, sugar is stored as fat and that leads to obesity, diabetes, hypertension, cancers. You choose low salt foods and use salt sparingly because hypertension, salt is when you have high blood pressure, when you just reduce your salt intake, your blood pressure medication requirement will go down. So if you start early by not taking much sugar, by being active, by not being obese, 
and you choose low salt diet, you may not, even if you have genetic predisposition for hypertension, you may escape it. The other thing is that don't think that if you are obese as a youth or as a child, it has no consequences. You may be obese as a youth, but then when you reach adulthood, you reduce your weight, but there are some consequences that will follow you even then. Some consequences in terms of arthritis, in terms of diabetes, because you have worked your pancreas when you are young, and therefore that choice will definitely have some consequences. So the so key to eating smart, you have to take a variety, balance, and moderation. This is the key, variety, balance and moderation uh the bible the the the, the, the servant or to, to the remnant ellen white writes in the book councils uh on, uh on diet that eat mostly bread fruits vegetables and legumes eat moderately of dairy eggs and nuts you know there are some people who think that when you uh, uh, uh when you leave eating beef or whatever you can now go full blast on things like eggs and uh, day and milk and nuts, you eat them excessively. Even those ones, you must eat them in moderation because the, the eggs carries dairy foods, eggs carry with them a lot of cholesterol, which can be, which is, can be dangerous to your health. So what is the predominant, the advantages, the rationale for plant-based diet? The health advantages, basically, as we shall mention, is low mortality rates. When you, you we have seen studies, which have looked at, uh, uh, there's a place in the US, in Loma Linda, where people live longest in the world, in the US, not in the world, but in the US. And when they looked at them, they found that these were predominantly vegetarians, eating many plants-based diets. So you have long life, good life, low mortality rates when you are taking plant-based diet. There are the environmental reasons because less land is needed to produce plant proteins as compared to animal protein. Because if you want to keep one cow, you'll use acres of land to keep to, to generate the silage and, uh, and, 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 and the feed for, the, for one cow. One cow needs lots, lots of land, but you just need a, a, a small, even half an acre to produce a lot of vegetables. So less land is needed to produce plant proteins as compared to animal protein. And secondly, uh, this, because of availability of land, uh, uh, there are economic advantages of plant-based diet because uh, you are able to sustain agriculture which can feed a larger number of people uh, uh, based on, 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 on the util utilizing small piece of land to generate a lot of, uh, of, of, of uh, uh, food which can feed a larger people as compared to when you are trying to generate, uh, for example, meat. Of course, there are other philosophical and ethical reasons there are those who don't believe, believe that scaling uh, slaughtering animals is discouraging slaughtering on animals and they consider it as inhumane treatment of animals. Uh, and therefore, there, there are many prescriptions which have been made on how to even slaughter a cow, how to slaughter chicken, uh, and, 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 and so forth, because they think that cutting animals for purposes of eating is inhumane treatment of animals. Of course, there are religious beliefs, advocacy, there are religions which advocate vegetarianism by religious groups that are those who, who believe that uh, some of the animals represent deity and therefore they advocate for vegetarianism. And, and, and uh, that's how it, they, they, they look at it. Um, <clears throat> The other advantages of plant-based diet is low total serum cholesterol. Uh, and and you, when you take a vegetarian, you lower cholesterol. You know, cholesterol clogs the arteries and can predispose us to heart attacks. The other thing about 
vegetarian diet is reduced risk of colon cancer. The association of beef and colon cancer is as strong as the association between smoking cigarettes and lung cancer. When you eat meat predominantly, you are at high risk of getting colon cancer. And you know colon cancer is one of the top 10 cancers in our country, Kenya. And then there's the lower risk of lung cancer when you take a predominantly plant-based diet. And that's why the Paul, Paul said, Apostle Paul writes, where you eat or drink. Don't you know that your body is the temple of God? So where, whether you drink or eat, do it with the glory of God. Take care of the temple of God so that you, are, you, are, you remain strong you, you, and you, you live for a longer time and you are in good health to serve the Lord. The Lord does not require weak, deceased vessels. He needs strong, energetic vessels which are going to serve him for a long time. The other thing that uh, you are predisposed to when you take a uh, non-plant-based diet, or the advantage of plant-based diet, the lower incidence of kidney stones, and this can be very, very painful. And therefore, you, you, are, you have low mortality also caused by diabetes and lower prevalence of diverticular disease. Diverticular disease affects the large intestines because you get out poachings in the intestine because of chronic constipation. You know, plant-based diet leads to constipation and therefore plant-based diet reduces constipation and therefore reduces the risk of diverticular disease. You know, when you get severe diverticular disease, you have to go for surgery to remove the portion of the colon uh, that is uh, having that diverticular disease by, by surgery and can even lead to perforation and death. And, 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 and this is one of the advantages of plant-based diets. And also, uh, we are talking about decreased risk of colon cancer, potential for lower consumption of toxins. You know, when you are talking about food chain, the healthy one, you know, the healthy food is the one which is coming from the ground, from plants. But we, we, you have heard the move about organic versus inorganic and so forth. If you generate food using fertilizers, you are increasing the toxin. But if you use uh, natural uh, uh, soil with, with, with no fertilizer, you use co, uh, manure generated from other plants, the toxins are lower. But if, for example, the, this food which has got toxin, this plant is eaten by animals, the meat now has got a higher concentration of toxins. So when you're taking plant-based diet, you are taking a lower concentration of toxins. You know, the toxins in the plant are concentrated even more in the chicken and, 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 and the beef and the fish, and then you are taking a higher concentration of toxins. Um, but the worst is if you take an animal, which eats another animal, now the toxins are even increased many fold. There is also a leading cause of blindness in old age is cataract. And I'm sure many of you have seen your grandparents going for surgery in Kikuyu or Kikuyu Hospital or wherever, Lions Hospital in Nairobi, for extraction of cataracts. And these cataracts are more in those who are taking plant, non-plant based diet. And, and, and you see, it is one of the commonest causes of, 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 of one of the commonest causes of cataract is diabetes, which uh, we have already said is reduced when you are a vegetarian. And also, you know, diabetes also is the leading cause, one of the leading causes of blindness worldwide, because diabetes not only brings cataract, but they also affect the retina of the eye. And hypertension also affect the retina of the eye. So one of the leading causes of blindness, you can say by projection that, uh, by projection that one of the leading causes prevention of blindness can be achieved by going for plant-based diet. So the sensible diet therefore is variety, avoid monotony, 
new and plan new ways of preparing food. And, and you need to have a balance. When I'm talking about vegetarian diet, I'm not saying that you go home and start ugali, skuma wiki, skuma wiki, ugali, ugali, skuma wiki, skuma wiki, ugali. No, you must learn new ways of preparing food. And I'm hoping that one of the sessions that Shofa is going to do during this time of, of physical uh, 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 engagement with their bodies, they are going to learn new ways of preparing food. Even beans can be prepared in many other ways, not just one way. You should prepare many ways, learn many ways of preparing even skuma wiki, many ways of preparing uh, other, other vegetarian uh, stuff, new ways of preparing food, so that you don't also bore yourself. Sometimes boredom is what makes you to be curious and start eating bats and other things that can lead to uh, corona and other things. The other loss of health is that we need to have sufficient sleep. And, and one day, God willing, we will talk about how to get more done in less time. And we'll talk about the importance of sleep. And then exercise, plenty of fresh air, right thinking, and clean living. But now I want us to mention about exercise. And many of you are not exercising, even now. And your reason is that I don't have time or I don't have the right equipment. I cannot afford a gym. I am too clumsy. And for all the people, they say, I'm too old to play sports. Those are some of the, hub, the excuses. But the benefits of the exercise should be able to propel you to start exercise. exercise. Benefit of exercise to the heart include increased power of the heartbeat, increased efficiency of the heart. You know, the heart is one of those organs that work from birth to the time when you are dead, and therefore it needs to be efficient. And exercise helps you to achieve a lower heart rate so that you do not overwork your heart. And smoother and larger arteries, coronary arteries. Coronary arteries are, are blood vessels that supply the heart. And when they are blocked, it's when you talk about heart attack. Exercise also controls your appetite and reduces coronary atherosclerosis. Coronary atherosclerosis is just blockage of the arteries. It's blockage or reduced up, uh, aperture of the arteries that supply the heart. So uh, when you're exercising, you have enough blood to the kidneys and other organs helping, helping in reduction of blood pressure. Hence, digestion by supplying adequate blood to the stomach and bowels are therefore reducing the stomach and the uh, intestinal diseases. Help pulls cool us down by supplying enough blood to the skin. So exercise, if there's a pill that needs to be invented, if there are people, young people like you guys who are innovative and you want to make a, an innovation that will be a blockbuster, a blockbuster in the world, invent something which can put exercise in a pill and make you swallow. Something that can replace exercise. Exercise ensures the reception of fresh and nourishing blood to the entire body and help in the detoxification of blood in the liver and reduces the chances of venous thrombosis, that is clotting of blood on the legs. And you know, one of the things that causes sudden death is when the blood clots, when you are just uh, sedentary and lazing around, blood clots in the leg, when you rise to, to walk, that blood can be, that clot can be dislodged and goes to the lungs and somebody who was just normal dies sudden. It's called, uh, 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 is, is thrombo, a thrombus goes to the lungs, pulmonary thromboembolism. And I'm sure you must have heard of people died suddenly. Somebody was just okay, then he dies suddenly because of clot in the, in, oh, which has dislodged to the lungs. And, and this is one of those things that can be prevented by exercise. And you know, exercise and diet put together will prolong your life. Exercise makes living fun mental abilities are enhanced. You know, when you exercise, there's a natural mood. Even if you are feeling low and you go and exercise, you will, you will in, 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 uh, release a, a natural mood elevators. There are 
hormones which are released only when you exercise and improves your mental ability. And exercise will uh, enhance. The air, airways will process oxygen more efficiently and exercise will kick those bloods with less depression and control stress. One of the leading uh, management of stress is to exercise. And, and uh, uh, it saves money by not by improving your health, lowers resting heart rate, the heart gets more work done with less effort, improves your image, better self worth. You know, when you are fit, you feel good, your image is better, you, you know that uh, you are not clumsy. The blood vessels open up and increase the, uh, the capillarity of circulation. You have, you have better circulation and you just feel good about yourself when you are feeling, uh, when you are well, uh, when you exercise. Uh, exercise proves circulation generally, not as likely, you are not as likely to have heart disease and it gives you a sense of being in control and you fatigue less easily. You become strong even to sing for the Lord even to serve the Lord, even to go for mission for the Lord. You, the Lord uses better somebody who is well nourished and well exercised. And that's what the Lord needs in his service. And uh, unnecessary body fat disappears. You have proper weight management and your bones become strong. And uh, when you are young, this does not make sense. But when you are above 60 years, 70 years, you, you can get what we call fragility fractures due to osteoporosis. And those who are strong as young people who have got strong bones are less likely to develop uh, fragility fractures. And you know fragility fracture is somebody just gets fracture of the neck of the femur, for example, and you get admitted. And your chances, 50% of poor people who get fracture at, at old age, fracture of the neck of femur, will not leave the hospital life. The risk of dying from fracture of the neck is as high as the risk of dying from cancer of the breast. And this is one of the things that are very important. All those fractures of the neck of femur have been increased by some transport methods like Bora Bora, which increases accident. And when you fall off a Bora Bora and you get fractured neck of femur, your chances of surviving it are 50%. Uh, if you are an old person, because you'll get other complications, infection, clot of blood on the legs, and so forth. So, what are the simple exercises that you can adapt? You can walking, jogging, riding a bicycle, swimming, taking stairs instead of taking lifts. And I suggest that one of the things that you can do as chauffeur, you can engage yourself in walking clubs that every Sunday you go to the arboretum and just walk. You just go to Uhuru Gardens and just walk uh, and walk, walk. What you need is just, you don't need any equipment. You just need comfortable shoes and uh, appropriate wear and you just be walking. Jogging, riding a bicycle, swimming. Swimming, for example, in the Olympic pool at the University of Nairobi is for free. But even at AYMCA, just next to the Nairobi, is minimal, minimal. So swimming, riding a bicycle, jogging, walking. You can buy a bicycle and, and, and ride it to and from wherever you stay, to where you go to operate from. And, and uh, the only tragic thing is that uh, we don't have lanes for riding a bicycle. But those are some of the things that can be introduced if we ask for it, if we demand. Uh, for it from uh, the, the various governors that govern the areas that we operate from, the MCAs and all the, those kind of fellows. Exercise will stimulate blood circulation. And uh, the most important thing is to avoid extreme because you can also cause yourself future stress and disharmony and injure your joints and ligaments by being extreme. You are not uh, uh, a lift. Uh, those things that lift heavy weights or you are not a pickup to carry heavy things. Just also do it in moderation. What kind of exercise is best for you? Exercise that feels good and leave you relaxed. Ex and exercise you can stick with as you get older. 
because a lifetime exercise. Exercise is one thing that you should develop uh, 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 for life and you should just engage with it and go on with it. And uh, that's why I suggested walking because walking is something you can grow old with and stick with and do it for life. The other law, well, laws of health is relaxation. Watch out for signs of ill health and avoid stress. Relaxation, sometimes you can be too busy. There's also the wisdom of doing nothing. You must create a time in your life where you just take time off activities and just relax so that you may just rest the body. Even a garden, which a garden which is plowed, which is plowed needs to rely, rest so that the produce is increased. You need to relax once in a while. Just relax. Don't have a schedule that is too busy. Even in the work of the Lord, you can be too busy in the vineyard of the Lord until you forget the master of the business. You need to relax so that you also communicate. You can have time to listen to the still more small voice of the Lord speaking to you and giving you new instructions like he gave Jonah. But you may be too busy in the business of the Lord until you don't listen when the Lord is speaking to you. I want to mention in passing social health, is a good relationship with others, good relationship with your spouses, good relation with your children if you have, good relation with your in-laws, with your neighbors, classmates, workmates. These are important because if you don't have good, this good relationship, we cannot say that you are healthy. You may have good physical absence of disease, physically fit, but you need this one, social health to be classified as good in good health. You need to have good relationships. Mental disease expresses itself as irritability, mental anguish, irrational and cross. You come for choir practice and then you are just irritable. Loss, lose of appetite. Sometimes you can overeat. Lack of sleep, poor concentration. And, and these are, are, are uh, manifestations of social uh, disease. They say, therefore, balanced living, the first line of balanced living is that you have, need to have good, good physical health, mental alertness, good social relationship, and good spiritual health. Spirituality is important for balanced living. Spirituality, we're talking about love for God, love for fellow man, having a clear conscience, and devoting your life to the service of others, being the hand that the Lord is going to use to do his work in this world, being the foot that the Lord is going to use to, 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 to meet people in various places, being the voice that the Lord is going to use to, to broadcast his message, service for others. That is part of the spiritual health that we are talking about. So balanced living brothers and sisters, will give you give your life depth, breadth, and length. One day we will talk about the breadth and depth, breadth, and length of life. And it does not come by chance and wishful thinking. You must work towards balanced living. And it comes through planned life, harmonious physical, mental, social, and spiritual whole. Thank you very much. But I'll say that finally, brothers, fill your minds with everything that is true. Everything that is good and pure. Everything that we love and honor and everything that can be thought of virtuous or worthy of praise. Paul writing the Philippians in Philippians chapter four, verse eight. And that is the message that I want to leave you with this evening in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. George. It has been a very, very informative session. Uh, so something that maybe I got from the session is my body is the, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I need to treat it like that, you know. So if I say I'm starting to exercise on Monday, I've been saying that since last year. So I think this Monday is the Monday now. 
that I will start exercising. And uh, so we go to the question and answer session. Um, so maybe as mentioned, we have just a few questions. So I'll just say, I'll just ask all the questions and then Dr. George can respond to them. So the first question is, how can someone deal with cravings that they're having? You know, maybe cravings for chocolate or something like that. How can someone deal with cravings like that? Um, another question is, for someone who experiences acidity, what is the proper diet for them? Or should they eat it? Uh -huh. uh, another question is, should we eat three times a day or just twice a day? Some people actually eat once a day. Is that okay or is, is it not? And another question is, how often should we exercise? Every day or once a week or once, twice in a week? Welcome, Dr. George. Uh, thank you very much. Those are uh, excellent questions. But the, one of the things about question and answer session, usually questions are usually very difficult. How can someone deal with cravings? Cravings can be a sign of um, social ill health, could be a sign of depression and a sign of stress. And, and, and one of the ways of dealing with the cravings is to start exercising so that you remove the stress that is leading you to this. Thing. Number two, cravings is uh, uh, you, it's a sign of indiscipline. You just need to discipline yourself. You say that, you say no. You know, you make a U-turn to bad habits. You just say from now onwards, um, if you're eating 10 chocolates a day, I'm only going to eat one or half. Uh, but, you know, cra cravings can also be addictive. And addictive is fought not by mere thinking, but by, by, by mere talking or, or imagining. You must, you fight addiction in your head. Do you know you cannot even take medicine for addiction? You must make a decision yourself that I'm going to stop this habit and pray about it and ask people to pray with you about it. And you'll, you'll make a U-turn to cravings. I think I'll put it that way. The second thing, acidity, is there a proper diet for acidity? There are certain foods, if you have acidity, Number one, you need to be diagnosed and be known, is it just high acid production? Do you have reflux of diet acid coming up the esophagus? And there are some that can be dealt with medically. Then there are foods, there are foods that have high acid content, and you know it, you know them. This is one of the reasons why we say that, uh, for example, if you take drinks that contain caffeine, they produce stimulate acid production. And that's why we try uh, uh, within to, to encourage people to reduce stimulants like caffeine so that they don't have high acid production. And also there's a way of regulating your meals. You take small portions, regular small portions than huge portions to regulate the acidity. And, and uh, there are certain foods that contain high acid uh, 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 acidic drinks and so forth, but you will be able to know, uh, you will be able to know the acidic food because once you eat it, you'll, they'll tell you they, you have eaten something uh, that you should not have eaten and you should reduce and, and modify your diet accordingly. How many times should we eat per day? <laughs> this is a difficult question. But generally, traditionally, we have been eating three times per day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This is the traditional method, and this is the way we are culturalized. One of the things that I would want to say is, number one, if that's the, the, the way you're brought up, you should avoid snacking in between, avoid snacking, because snacking just increases your, 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 your uh, necessary, take a necessary color. Number two, we say that you should eat breakfast like a king, uh, 
the, the, your meals should be a pyramid. The breakfast should be the biggest meal, followed by lunch in between. And your dinner can even just be a fruit to avoid and taking unnecessary food, which you don't need. Most of the people who, are, who are, have got problems with weight management is because they eat huge dinners. They eat the reverse. They take little breakfast or no breakfast, moderate lunch, and huge dinners. If you want to control your weight, it should be the other way around. You should almost not eat supper. Take good breakfast, moderate lunch, and then little, little uh, dinner. But the way we are culturalized and brought up, we take three meals or even more. But depending on what you are dealing with, sometimes there's a certain condition where we tell you to take several meals in a day, small portions, so that you don't have uh, you don't have food uh, uh, like uh, you, do, you don't have uh, regurgitation of food up. Uh, how often should we exercise? In fact, not even how often. How long should we exercise? A good exercise should take at least thirty minutes. Thirty minutes, if possible, at least three times per week. Thirty minutes when you are engaged there, so that you 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 are able to 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 to, to burn the necessary calories and also to 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 to, to improve the, the the heart functioning, the vitality of the heart and the vitality of organs. And and I think there is not even how many times you can also underdose yourself with exercise when you just do. Some people do vigorous exercise for five minutes and then they say, oh, I've exercised, I've sweated. But you should maintain a heartbeat for at, uh, at a certain rate for, for more than 30 minutes. Uh, and I think uh, 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 if possible, three times. But there's no overdosage of exercise. There's underdosage. If you can exercise for 30 minutes every day per week, every day per week, seven, seven. They say 24, seven, I don't know. Uh, 24, <laughs> seven, seven. So every day, you get 30 minutes and exercise per day. There's nothing uh, bad unless you are overexerting yourself. Somebody asked, is there a difference between exercise for fitness and bodybuilding? Is there, if there is, which of the two is recommended to achieve good health without putting strain on the body? The one which we, I'm talking about is for fitness. Bodybuilding builders not only just exercise, but they use drugs, they inject the muscles, they use androgens and so forth but uh, i'm talking about i'm dealing with normal human beings who just want to be fit for the service of the lord and to live a long life so that the lord uses them for a long time even when they are old you know even when you are old you, are not, you don't need to be frail when you are fit as a young man you will remain fit even old age how do you elderly people with joint pains in terms of diet and exercise you know, how you manage yourself, how you'll be in old age depends on how you manage yourself in, 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 in as a young person. Because uh, when you manage, manage your diet well and manage your physical fitness well, you will go to old age as a healthy person. But once you get healthy or old uh, 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 and you get these diseases, we can always, uh, case by case, manage you, manage your arthritis, manage your pains, and advise uh, diet depending on what you are having. Diet is not, sometimes diet is not ready-made, it's tailor-made. If you're diabetic, your diet is different. If you're obese, your diet is different. If you're hypertensive, your diet is different. Uh, and, and therefore, that is, is, uh, that's what I can say. Are plant proteins high in calories compared to animal proteins? Yeah, that's true because you, your caloric intake is, is increased and your chances of getting obesity, uh, high cholesterol are higher than compared to plant proteins. Yes, I think I've answered the questions that have been raised so far. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. George. Um, if you have a, if you have a burning question, because we are out of time. Any other question? 
because we are out of time, uh, the question, the remaining questions will be sent to you directly, and then you can respond to you can respond to them. Yes. So thank you so much, Dr. George, for accepting to come and speak to us tonight. It has been a very, very informative se session. And thank you everyone for coming. And I want to welcome everyone for next week's session as well. Uh, make sure you invite a friend next week when you come. And if you want to listen to this session again, or you had missed previous sessions and you want to listen to them again, you can find the videos on YouTube at We Are Shofa. You can also find us at on Instagram and on Twitter at We Are Shofa as well. And on Facebook, we are just Shofa. Uh, and if you have a prayer request or if you have any request at all that you would like chaplaincy to address, you can email them at chaplaincy at weareshofa.com, chaplaincy at weareshofa.com. Uh, so thank you everyone for coming. It has been a very, very lovely session. Oh, and if you have any questions, you can reach out to Shofa Chaplaincy as well. Thank you. So I'll request one of us to pray. Uh, I'll request... Uh, Orlando to pray for us if, if he's in a position to. All right, thanks, Faith, and thank you everyone for joining. Let's believe and pray. Our Father in heaven, we come before you at this time. We want to thank you, Lord, for the week that has been and for you guiding us in our going out and in our coming in. We want to Praise your name, Lord, for everyone who had an opportunity to listen to Daktari speak to us. And Lord, for this timely message that you've placed in our hearts. How we pray, Lord, that through your power, may you empower us, Lord, to practice that which we've learned. And also, Lord, to be uh, centers of influence to those who did not attend, so that, Lord, together we may share of the joy of your blessings and of this uh, wonderful uh, information that we've received. Be with us through the night and may you bring us back again to learn from you because you have asked this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Orlando. And thank you again, everyone, for coming. Thank you so much. We meet here again next week, same time, same place. Bye. Good night, everyone. <laughs>